When you think of consecutive integers, you don't normally think of quadratics. However, there are instances where you may have quadratics result from the relationships given to you. Now, we have a word problem, but again, don't think of it as a quadratic yet. Think of all word problems the same way and approach it with these four steps. Define the variables, translate into an equation, solve the equation, and check. The hardest part is one and two. You know how to solve and check. So let's read the problem carefully and then decide what we're going to do. It says the product of two consecutive odd integers is one less than four times their sum. You want to find the two integers. Well, before you can do anything, you should define the variables. And in a consecutive integer problem, we can let any variable we want equal the first consecutive integer. You have to be careful with the next part. It's odd integers. So the one after x, take 3 for example, the next odd integer after 3 is 5, which is 2 more. So if x is your first, x plus 2 is going to be your, first, your second consecutive odd integer. And you should add into the first one the letter O. It's consecutive odd. Okay? We forgot that in the first part. Now, we took care of step one. We've defined the variables. Now we have to do the hard part, which is translate. Just read it carefully. The product of two consecutive odd integers is. Right away, I see that word is, and I know that's where the equal sign goes. So when I'm underlining in red, that's going to be the left side of your equation. So let's translate that first. The product of two consecutive odd integers. That's just taking x and x plus 2 and multiplying them. That's equal to. What I'm going to underline in green now is the right side of your equation. 1 less than 4 times their sum. When you see less than, that means minus, but don't forget that that 1 is going to be put to the right of the minus sign. So you do 4 times their sum, which is 4 times x plus x plus 2 minus 1. Now you simplify. Let's solve the equation. First, let's simplify the left side. We get x squared plus 2x equals, inside the parentheses here on the right, we can simplify x plus x and get 2x. So we distribute the 4, and we get 8x plus 8 minus 1. Okay, so we simplify the right side here. We can simplify 8 minus 1 and get 7. So it's x squared plus 2x equals 8x plus 7. So now let's simplify. Subtract 8x from both sides. Okay, uh, it's gone from here. We got x squared minus 6x equals 7. Now we have to subtract 7 from both sides. So we get x squared minus 6x minus 7 equals 0. Remember, to start the problem, I saw the x squared. Once I see that 2, I know I'm dealing with a quadratic equation, so I have to follow the process I just did, which is get it equal to 0. Once you get it equal to 0, it's basically what we did before. So let's bring it up. Okay. So, fact of the trinomial. Two numbers that multiply to negative 7 and add to negative 6. First of all, you split up the x squared. Okay. It's negative 7 and positive 1. We set both factors equal to 0. Okay, and I get x equals 7 and x equals negative 1. Well, that's weird. I get two answers. But here's what you have to note. In some situations, there could be multiple answers to a question. So the first consecutive integer we saw could be negative 1 or 7. So think of both ways. If the first one is negative 1, the second one could be 1. If it's 7, the other one is 9. So the two possible solutions are negative 1 and 1, or 7 and 9. Okay, so that is how you solve this type of a